Right, guys. So, thank you for joining us for Glute Building 101. <laughs> Every time I go, go to say this title, I just burst out laughing. How to make your ass match your sass. You've got to thank Clara for that title. And um, it was pretty catchy. And it's probably the most amount of signups we have ever had for a webinar. So, pretty exciting. If I'm honest, we thought that the last webinar we'd done would have been that one. Um, but following today's announcement in Scotland, uh, I guess there's a bit of mixed emotions with people on here. Um, if you live in Scotland, you live in England. Then, end of the day in Scotland, uh, we knew it wasn't going to be uh, in July for us anyway. But in England, uh, to have a date is, is pretty good and something to work towards. And then obviously, we're usually two, two or three weeks behind there. So hopefully, what we provide for you or give you in this webinar will set you up for building an ass after uh, or when the gym's open. So there's a few things that we are going to discuss. I'll cover the first sort of 10, 15 minutes, and then the real sort of uh, the real information will come from Ali and Clara. And as I always say, it's not a homeless man on the end of the screen. It's just Ali, and he just needs a shave. Right, so <laughs> the aim of the webinar, what, why are we here today? Just to help you guys understand just what the glutes do. I, I think that there's a lot of misinformation. People will just see an exercise on Instagram and think, oh, that, that must be something that I'll do and that'll help me build a peachy bum. Um, well, we're, we're here today just to tell you what exactly they do, like what, mu what movements that they'll be incorporated in, and then that should lead on to how we program Ali to Nutrition, and Clara will tell you all about how she's managed to, to build her glutes up. I'll start off by discussing, as I said, fundamental aspects of training. I'm going to help you build your glutes over time. As I said, Ali will do the nutritional stuff. Now, the nutritional stuff that Ali will cover, um, we are obviously going to be talking specifically about building your glutes, but this will help you with building muscle mass anywhere within the body. But specifically, we'll be talking about how you can perhaps hold on to tissue when you're dieting down in your glutes. And then, as I said, Clara will give you a little bit of an account herself. And she's done pretty damn fantastic, and I'm so glad that she is able to share her journey on this. And I think it'll give you guys a real sort of um, in-depth experience about the you know, highs and lows and just things that will perhaps go through a female's mind uh, opposed to you. Me and Ali don't mind if we get a fat ass. In fact, I, I've, always had, I've always got a fat ass. But for some females, you know, putting on an extra body weight um, might not be the, the, the most sort of um, th thing in their mind that they want to do. But Clara's here to, to tell you how that she was able to, to get over that. So, training principles, right? What is the glute's job is, is one of the main things I'm going to talk about. So hip extension, that's a really fancy word so if we were to think about whether it's a hip thruster or whether we're squatting your glutes and hamstrings are going to work in synergy right so your hamstrings are going to allow you to, to push your hips back and allow you to bend the knee now from that position so i don't know if you're sitting down or you're standing up i can't see any of you what i would suggest all you do is stand up from your chair as you do that try and use your bum to stand up or Get off your chair, stand, st like step it to the side, push your bum back from that position, squeeze your butt, and use your butt to bring your whole body forward, right? If you get very, very fucking strong in that movement across, the, across a range of different movements, your bum will get bigger. It will grow, right? Hip extension, or the glutes in general, will control the movement in the hip, really, is what I'm trying to say with this slide. Hip ab abduction. People get confused between ab and ad. All right. So I've used the common example that you'll see. Now, you actually might look on Instagram and see women do this sitting off the machine and, and kind of doing it almost backwards, if that makes sense. Please, please don't fucking do that. <laughs> right. We'll go into why, but. What we want to be doing on any move to try and increase muscle mass is have as much stability as possible. From a scientific perspective, the more stable that we are, the more force we can produce. And you're thinking, well, what the hell has that got to do? Well, if we can produce more force, we can break down more muscle. And if we break down more muscle mass, what can we do? Ali will talk about nutrition recovery. We can build a bigger bum, right? So hip abduction is something you'll see on a machine or you might see some girls put a band around their, their knees and walk sideways on the treadmill or the Stairmaster thinking that that's going to do them some good. It won't, right? Doing something that might perhaps be tra called trab walks or, or whatever it is, or walking sideways up the Stairmaster, 
or certainly just fads that people have jumped on now. Whenever in real life do you walk sideways up the stairs? You don't, right? You don't. So of course your glutes are going to feel it because it's just not a movement you're used to, but you're feeling a big burn of lactic acid buildup. You're not actually doing anything that will stimulate muscular growth. So hip abduction, this like specific machine, that's something that I'll program in later on in a program. Um, and you'll see that you'll see an example of how I'll, we program here in a few in later slides. Hip internal external rotation. You're probably thinking, what does that mean, right? Look down at your knees, plant your feet to the floor, move your knees out, move them in without moving your foot, right? That's hip internal external rotation. I've given you a wee example here of a lady lying on her back. And as I said, she's, she's moved her foot out or foot in. It's exactly what you'd be doing. So if we were to use a classic example of on a squat, we, 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 we drop down we'll often teach to push your knees wide, right? That is externally rotating the hip, right? What's internal rotation? The complete opposite of that, right? Knees caving in. Don't do that on a lift. You're thinking, but Vaughn, that's what the glutes do. But you'll also cause yourself an injury because it's a very instable position. So hip internal external rotation, it's actually the piriformis is its own antagonist, right? No need for, to, to me be going into that today. It's not today at the point of the day, Sarah. But hopefully this gives you just a rough idea of the main jobs that the glutes, plural, will do because there's not just one. We've all heard the, the gluteus maximus, but you've also got medius as well, right? Now, if we move on, I sh I've messed up the animation for this because... No, I, I fixed it. No, it was right the first time, Clara, because <laughs> I wanted to get these girls photos up first oh then, my bad and then the question <laughs> how many banded kick matters you think they do i wanted to i wanted to give emphasis and a point on that one but it's okay, <laughs> okay. those of you that don't know clara will put together our slides i made up mine but i actually wasn't lazy and i put the animation in clara it's okay don't worry about it right um, we'll deduct that from your wages no i'm just kidding right oh. <laughs> <laughs> My main emphasis, right? This is uh, Laura Brand on the left of your screen, who is a bikini girl that's competing in two bros next year. Um, and then this is Kira Banner, um, who did compete this year in junior bikini um, and will be competing in wellness next year. My main point is go on either one of their Instagrams. You can see there that they, they have nice, solid, like good, good mus like muscular glutes there on the left. Clara's got, uh, Clara, Kira's got nice lean glutes on the right. Now, could you just imagine? what if any banded kickbacks crab walks walks on the stairmasters they've done the answer will be zero right but what i wanted to just emphasize is that what i'm going to talk about in these future slides i want these photos to just be in the forefront of your mind about how they've been able to do this and how they're able to build that this transformation here from laura she has now had 33 weeks of coaching in total and 14 of them have been from home in a gym so it can show you that it can be done. Um, and then Kira herself, we did a prep, um, which her show was the week before lockdown happened. Um, but as you can see, there's been an increase in muscle size whilst we've dieted, simply because of how I programmed and how we're gonna, we worked on nutrition. So one of the main sort of, I guess, money makers that you're all probably wondering is how do we increase the glute size over time? Well, it's the same as any increasing any muscle over time, isn't it? that if these three factors do not increase, I'm really sorry to tell you, you're not gaining tissue. So we have to increase the weight on the bar. So let's take your, your hip thruster. If you continue to do 60 kilos, and you do 60 kilos for six months, you're not gonna grow, right? But in, that, in those six months, you're saying, but Vaughn, I put more food on my plate, and the number on the scales is going up. Yeah, you're probably adding a lot of body fat and very little muscle mass. Right, so, but, and that's me not bullshitting you, being absolutely real. So what we must ha do is is have an intent of putting more weight on the bar. So writing out our logbook, writing out our numbers. Think of what's a logbook? Just simply a book that you will denote all the, the weights that you will do for for your session. So making a conscious effort. If you've done sixty kilos for a, between a six to eight rep range, and you hit nine, that weight's too light. The next week you've got to bump up. The one thing that people will naturally not do 
is they will not eat if they are not hungry, right? If, it, if they're eating intuitively, they simply will not get more food in. And it's why if you follow Clara, you'll see her talk about, oh my God, a food increase, oh my God, a food increase, right? But if, okay, now Clara is a hungry demon, but <laughs> if she wasn't, then she maybe perhaps wouldn't, add, you know, she'd be getting stronger, but not putting more food in the plate. So if we're continuing to add weight on the bar, we've got to think our energy demands to do that weight and recover from that weight all increase. So we need to match them, but also we want to add more muscle mass and we want to do that. We know that the number on the scales has to go up. Number on the scales, water, body fat, muscle mass, bone, etc., etc. Muscle is in there, so you know it's still got to go up. As I said to you, without increasing these, your ass is not going to match your sass. I personally can't teach you how to, to, to have sass. I've got much, much sass as a wet towel, but <laughs> Clara will be able to do that for you um, if, if you do want to. She's done fitness model. Ali's pretty good at flicking his hair. <laughs> now, um, I will first be going to train on a more serious note. So, fundamentals. Progressive overload is all well and good but with perfect form. Um, now, it's funny, I, he's probably not watching this, but Fitch replied to my story last week. I put um, a video of me up of doing hip thrusters, and uh, he, he messaged me and he said, left three, right, as I had left three reps in the tank. And I mentioned him back saying, my form is shit. I'm not, like, I didn't leave three. I stopped because I wasn't controlling the weight. So what we want to have is we need to have, I will say, immense loads but immense form, right? So we want to go to a point where we are like strong as a bull, strong as an ox, but when we're shifting the, lo the load, people think we're moving in slow motion. If you do that, and let's say your hip thrust in 100 kilos and you're pausing for a second at the top, you're taking two seconds to go down, you're going to have some juicy glutes by the end of however many weeks you've been, you've been progressing that load. But intent when you train is something that, is often lost, right? You will see often on Instagram, as I said, a lot of fit chicks do hundreds of banded kickbacks, whatever it is, and they want to feel a they want to feel a burn of lactic acid. But what I'd question, what I'd ask you is, when you do a hip thruster or a squat, can you crush a five pence piece between your cheeks? Not just at the top of the squat. Can you do that from the bottom as you stand? You're thinking, damn, right? And and I get it. The first time when I used to do one-to-one, -one, clients would come in, they get to the bottom of the squat, I say, pause, this was perhaps without a weight. I'm like, right, can you, can you tense your glutes there? And they go. So again, if you are sitting there watching this, what I would say is without moving, can you squeeze your butt, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. If the answer is no, you can't, you've got to work on some glute activation. But if the answer is yes, when you're squatting next time, try it right? Or you're doing a hip extension or whatnot, right? From the bottom, we must start cueing the muscle that does the movement. We need to stop getting movement strong and get the muscle strong that does the movement. Mm -hmm. On top of that, intensity. You're going to see some amazing pictures of Clara giving it the fucking beans, right? Later on, me spotting her. Now, it's all well and good going in the gym and having this intent and progressive overload and whatnot, but if you aren't going to the point of failure every single time, how could you expect to get stronger? If you don't, if you've never been to a point of failure and you, you've always sort of left reps and reserve as we'll call them, you're never really reaching your true potential. But there's this sort of fear and expectation of how females should train and Clara going to later. But what I would say is that females, you guys are much fucking stronger than us guys. You can handle more volume, you can recover quicker, and any time I've trained with Clara, she's kicked my ass, right? In relation to her body weight and the load she's lifting, my body weight and the load I'm lifting. And the difference is I'm lying on the floor and she's ready to go again doing another set. <laughs> so you have, like, so take advantage of that, please. If I could, I would, but I can't, right? Because I'm, I'm not estrogen dominant like you females are. Now, we must get strong on a variety of lifts. And I'll go into an example of how we program, but they will be, whether it's sort of squats, single leg squats, your deadlifts, the leg press and whatnot, we cannot simply just go in and do, leg, and, and do hip extension all the time. Uh, sorry, do a hip thruster every single time we're in the gym, right? There has to be different angles, different variety, just so you're hitting 
the muscle fibers from a lot of different areas to create the most amount of adaptation that you can. You're thinking, right, Vaughn, that's cool. Well, I'll just go in, I'll just see how many, you know, get as strong as I can whilst doing 30, 40 reps. No, because what you're doing, you're pretty much doing that, doing that would be the same as doing what the skittles are doing on the, on the crab walks on, on the treadmill, right? What I would say is, yes, there's, there's room, there's premise for some metabolic work. And by that, I mean high reps and, and really, really limited rest. But that's going to comprise such a small part of your actual whole workout. The majority of that sort of first portion of the workout it's got to be heavy ass fucking weights. And then what we'd recommend is reps between six to 12. Get very, very strong, right? Between those rep ranges. And then at the end of your workout to try and deliver as much blood and nutrients to that muscle group as possible, you'll find that the importance about that soon when I talk about peri workout nutrition, um, a, a high rep set, big ass drop set, rest pause, cluster set, or something on the leg press. Frequency two or three times a week, I will go into exactly how much and how many sets um, in the next sort of couple of slides, as I just said. So glutes, I suppose I should say glutes and hamstrings, but glutes in general for females, I've found over time that they just require a lot of volume and frequency to respond. Now, we've talked about the fundamental things that you need to do, the intensity and whatnot, but how many sets, and I, I will say glutes and hamstrings because they work in synergy and on a lot of lifts that we'll do, we'll work both of them. If I was to calculate for every sort of female I'll work with, whether it's Clara or it's a different bikini girl or folks you give or whatever, I'll often give them between 20 to 26 sets across the week. Now you're thinking, well, fuck, that's a lot. And I mean, yeah, that's not including the sets for their quads. So you add the sets for the quads on top of that, you're, you're in excess of 30. Easy easy 30 32 some females will recover very very well off that very easy and, and grow stronger others that might be far too much i could not handle 20 sets towards my glutes and hamstrings and recover i would get injured without a shadow of a doubt right ali would be in a home because we'd be walking if that was the case if he was doing 20, 26 sets and um, training some fundamentals I, I said stop doing fluff work put the booty bands in the bin right now booty bands their importance i think is is fine for perhaps rehab injury prevention maybe activation before your session that is the only place that they have but what i mean by fluff work is let's say that ali's programmed you in for two sets eight to ten and a set of ten to twelve you know you do your first set you put on ten but you could have got fifteen and then you do your second set, and you, you, know, you get 10, you could have got 12. You've not done a set, not an hour ice. Yeah, those are still warm-up sets. So just make sure that the sets that you do are not fluff sets, fluff work. They are sets that you're going to the point where, you, you know, the facials look like you're ready to burst something, right? To the point where you can't do one more. Now, something that, again, Clara will touch on is that the long has got to scare you a little bit. It's got to give you that sort of little nervous feeling in your tummy, that little sort of when your bum hole's giving it the 5p, 10p. It's got to be to a point where you look at your logbook and you just go, fuck, I've got to go lift that. But the thing is, you're not going to do it overnight. All it, like, what, how it will come about is buying into the process and understanding that it's 1.25 kilos extra on either side of the weight or the bar every week, every other week or it's an extra rep at the same load. It's better form at the same reps in the same load. It's not, oh, wow, I hit my target rep range, I'll put on 20 kilos and aim for a load and then everything else gets sloppy. And I would be lying if I said that I haven't done it. I've done it many times and it's something I have to remind myself of. I'm getting better at it now in my old age, but it's something I have to remind myself of daily, right? Every other week as well. Uh, and that was what I did last week when I looked at the hip thrust and I went, yeah, it's cool I'm doing 270, but I'm not fucking controlling it. Um, so you're probably thinking by now, what are our methods? But also, Vaughn, I'm getting bored of you speaking, I want to hear the other two. It's coming, don't worry. So, uh, you know, th this is a, the Bikini Girl rotation. Um, I think this is the example or very close to the example that we have on the website, free to download. So I did tell my Instagram story that you guys would get a free one. Just go on a website, free program, fill in your email address, you get pinged it straight over. Um, so this is how we will usually work it. 
we've got exercise, reps, sets. Rest for us, it's always as required. Whenever you're ready to go as a female, you'd be ready to go, but don't be a fan of it and go after 30 seconds, right? Go when you're like, give it at least a couple of minutes. For me at Ali, it might be probably three to five minutes, right? Ali maybe closer to five because he's got to be on Instagram, like a few posts before he does his next next set. So how we program in, you know, something like adductors is not really a strong muscle group. I'm always going to put them in first, but something that is a bikini girl, very, very important for that look on stage. So boom, I'm banging that in first to get that done. So get the most amount of load on it and break down just so that if it was later on, then we, we just wouldn't really get the, the, the full, what's the word I'm looking for, your potential out of it. And then you've got your big ass moves, your hip thrusters, your smith squats. There's a little bit of quad work in here because I'm a huge, like I'm a huge fan of saying that we've got to work like, especially for females, all the legs frequently. But as you can see, if you were to total up two, four, seven, nine towards glutes and hamstrings, and then only four towards quads, and then we come on to again lower two, a little bit more of a quad focused day. Right, but we've still got two, four, seven sets towards glutes and hamstrings there with, again, two, five, seven sets of quads, right? Last full body day, as you can see again, because this is specific for, for a bikini girl and they'll really focus on glutes and hamstrings, we have three sets, three sets, two, so eight sets there. So you were sort of like seven, seven, then eight there. So what's that, 21 sets? So that sort of guide between 20 to 26 is a good example there. Now, we don't need to get into the upper body, but how we tend to program would be sort of like two, foot, two lower body days, two upper days, and then one full body. And as you can see, this is like sort of half and half. So any questions when it comes to programming or whatnot, drop me a DM or whatnot on Instagram, but I'm sure, boom, that is my part finished. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move us down and then, how do I stop sharing my screen here? The bottom, with, um, you, with your, your screen there. Right, wicked. Ali, I'm sure it is you up next. Yep, it is. Yo, everyone. So, <laughs> on to my, oh well, that'll move in a second. On to the nutritional part of this. So, first of all, here's a good plan that will actually work. So, obviously, Vaughn's covered training there i'm going to cover the nutrition of it clara's going to go into well some great shots of her and how she's built her glutes also can i just say clara's thrown in a few funny things in here that i'm going to have to say with a straight face so thanks for that <laughs> um, the, so the, the biggest thing is for me the, the huge stumbling block i see is commitment to actually building them so bonds obviously touched on it clara will as well but yeah, I just called you out as well for everyone in the chat. But we all know that females want better glutes. But you need to actually embrace – I don't know why this is not in there. You need to actually embrace the process. You need to actually focus on being the calorie surplus. And, yes, it can be difficult, but that's where we build tissue. That's where we progress our physiques. And that's the most important part. Being lean is cool, but it's not productive, as you can see here. We need to be in a surplus for growth. From there, your calories, peri-workout, and gaining weight. So when we are in a gaining phase, one of my bikini girls is in here, Magda. If you look on Instagram, you'll see her glutes. But when we are looking to build tissue, visuals will be a big part of it. And as you can see here, visuals will always come into effect for assessment, pun intended. <laughs> But it's very true. People are very scared of gaining phases because they think they'll look like shit. And I'll touch on why you won't if it's done properly. So from a simple point of view, we want to be aiming for 1 to 1 1.5 kilos um, increase in body weight per month while progressing your body, uh, your logbook and lift. So as Vaughn said, if you're training hard enough, then you're going in the right direction. If you're increasing your body weight, but you're training like shit, and your logbook's not going anywhere, you're not putting more weight on the bar, and you're not going to failure, then guess what? You are increasing body fat. And that's where people go wrong. You need both going together. Don't fear gaining weight. If you're training with intensity, your body will flourish. So exactly what he's covered there. Now, 
don't fear food either if it's justified it'll work amazingly so we know that fuel, uh, fuel is going to help us train and we know that food is fuel so there needs to be an increase in body weight and your food needs to go high so as Vaughn said with Clara her calories for her size and body weight are going to be very high for someone that's not a bodybuilder that looks at that they are going to be shocked but and for example, my client Magda in this chat was up at four and a half thousand calories. She's small in height. Not scared to eat though. So how do we go about this? Or how do you go about this? Because we already know. Set your calories in a place where weight gain is slow, but you're energized. You don't just go from being here to way up here straight away. That's a bad idea. You want to slowly increase them. Body weight will increase slowly. So will visuals. So yes, body fat might go up, but visuals are still holding there. So again, with Vaughn's example earlier, if you look at the photo of um, Laura Brand, she still looks great and she's in the gaining phase. That's how it should be. Focus on adding more calories on your lower body days when you're looking to grow. So the same works in dieting. So in dieting, we're looking to keep more food in the lower body days to help hold on to tissue. But on our... Um, gaining phase if you're female more than likely we're trying to grow lower body so keep your calories higher there you're trying to stimulate muscle growth you're trying to have more energy to actually train so we want to be higher calories on those days make sure protein intake is enough so 2.2 um, grams per kilogram of body weight is more than adequate big one here Make sure you do it consistently. It's not on and off. You don't eat it for five days and then at the weekend you go do what you want. You need to be consistent over time with all the factors. So this is a big one for me. This can be difficult as well if you're someone who's not been used to tracking, following a plan, etc. Take your time building it up. Use your carbs pre-workout, intra and post. So, funnily enough, someone actually messaged me on Instagram earlier saying that their coach told them not to eat carbs after 6 p.m. And what you've got to remember is carbs are fuel. They also taste great. And they are one of the most important parts of building muscle. Yes, we know protein is important, but carbs are just as important. And you need to have them there to fuel your workouts, recover, and also, for this bit, I can skip to the next bit because it's uh, doubled over. But with the carbs, you want to be taking in a good serving in your pre-workout meal roughly two hours before. This will come down to digestion. and um, Some people need a little bit more. You want to also be eating a meal that's easily digested, funnily enough. So Vaughn, I don't know if he still does it, but did eat oats for about four years uh, pre-workout. I've got my pre-workout meal. We all do. From there... If calories are high enough and can allow it, you want to be taking in an intra workout throughout your workout. And this will happen as well because if you train like us, our leg workouts are long and they're intense. So taking in carbs that are going to help throughout the workout are going to, is going to be really beneficial. And smash some carbs afterwards. Now, easiest way to describe this is this. I'm diabetic, so I can control my insulin intake. But if you're not, when we train, we break down tissue. Afterwards, when we take in a good dose of carbohydrates, you will spike your blood sugar slightly. Insulin will come along to bring it back down. And insulin is like a lock and key. So insulin helps to pull all the carbs into your system, but into your muscles. So carbohydrates are needed post-workout. And it's why you'll see a lot of people smashing big bowls of uh, cereal, etc., pop tarts in some cases. There's nothing wrong with that. We're taking in fast acting carbs that are going to help all the things above. Now, that's a big one there. People are scared to eat and they're scared to eat things like that. We need that structure to help gain. Also, I put this in here because it is true, but it's also very dependent on digestion. Not everyone on earth should be eating loads of cereal. You need to be digesting your food. If you're not, it's not working very well. 
The big one, wait till you're in a relaxed state. So don't eat three minutes after you train. That gym bro that told you that is not right. You don't have to I literally drink your protein shake as you're doing your calf raise. Get home, be relaxed, have your food. So from here, you will see this is a, a diagram of how to set out the calories. Now, I think this is actually Clara's calories, but you'll notice that on the lower body day, we're on 247, so basically 2,500. And you'll notice that it's a fair bit higher than the upper body day, and then non-training day is lower. Now, non-training day is lower because you're not training. You don't need that energy to stimulate. And we want to save our energy, our carbohydrates, for the lower body day. So good carbohydrates in there. This is the thing with it as well. 375 grams of carbs. I know guys that don't eat that much. You have to prioritize the basics. Protein, carbs, really important. You'll also notice on the peri-workout nutrition to the top right that her post-workout meal is 200 grams of carbs. That means out of her entire day, which is 375, she's taken in 200 grams of that in her post-workout meal. So if you follow Clara on Instagram, which I'm sure you all do, you've seen some of the post-workout meals. That's not just because it looks really cool on Instagram and we're bodybuilders. That's because it's effective. And it's okay. Clara's in great shape. So you can eat that and still be in shape. With the second uh, post-workout meal, you'll notice it's a little bit lower. And this is the big thing here. It's not just how hard you train in the gym. It's not just putting more weight on the bar and as Vaughn said, moving efficiently because remember, that's more important than weight or hand in hand, the same thing. But you also need to be fueling that. If you just hover around the same body weight, you're scared to push food up, your logbook's not going to progress and it needs to go hand in hand. From there, if you still don't believe me, here's some proof. Sorry, Magda, it's in the chat as well. I could have used you before and after, but Chloe in these two photos is 13 kilos heavier. That's 28 pounds. Now, I guarantee if you ask most people 28 pounds, they would shit themselves. <laughs> ask Vaughn, he's about 70 pounds. But, <laughs> um, but what you've got to focus on is if it's effective, your training's hard, you're eating correctly in line with your goals, you're going to build muscle. And as you can see here, muscle has been built. And that's simply just from following the plan, focusing on the basics, and doing it consistently. This shot here, um, Chloe actually put us on Instagram two weeks ago, and it's a great shot. Not only has she got strong glutes, you can see hamstrings and quads as well. This is literally from Chloe, lifting heavy, training to failure, and eating food. And I've said this, no growth happens in a comfy position. Now, I know you're all looking at this thinking, but what the hell, because Chloe looks amazing. I agree, but that doesn't mean when you're pushing body fat up, it can be difficult. The big thing is like, for example, I think Chloe hit, uh, hit five reps, so like 120 kilos on sumo deadlifts before gyms uh, shut, and like hip thrusting, I don't even know, more than me. She also squats very, very well. Now, that's not because she's magic. It's just because she wants to win on stage. She wants to progress her physique. So all this thing, all the stuff that we've spoke about needs to work together. In sum, get strong, eat enough to feel your performance, and train fucking hard. No glute kickbacks, heavy lifts, progress. And as Vaughn said, any of the girls that train hard enough come train with me and him, they're going to leave us behind. And that is very, very important. As Vaughn said as well, any questions about the nutrition uh, principles, please just drop me a DM on Instagram or you can find an email over the website and I will uh, answer it for you and help you push you in the right direction. Uh, Clara, now, just before Clara goes, can I jump in? Yep. Um, I know there'll be some, some sciencey geeks in here that'll probably want to know, um, but in relation to Ali was made some great points about carbohydrates, um, there's a lot of research out there to show that a, a big bolus of carbohydrates post-workout or close to the workout parameter will actually offset muscle breakdown or muscle protein breakdown. 
So it's why you see Clara eating such big, or, or any of the bikini girls eating such big bowls of carbs. But we know to grow muscle, we need to have protein in there because protein's the building blocks. So that's why just on that slide, I don't want to interrupt Ali, where it said, ensure you sort of dose protein adequately across the day. In that post-workout meal, when Clara has the massive carbs, they stop breakdown, but she puts protein in so the recovery process is stimulated. The further you get away from the workout parameter, that isn't quite the case. But we're in a constant seesaw of breakdown and recovery all day. And we always want the recovery side to win. Yeah, so I just thought I would add that. I was on. Clara, over to you. Over to me. Um, so I suppose like my contribution to to this webinar is just to give a personal account of what that everything that we've just discussed actually looks like in practice because it's all fine and well to say, okay, cool, right, I need to train hard, I'm going to eat, um, but what is it actually like to go through it? Um, and I thought I'd just put like a little disclaimer there that you are about to see a load of photos of my bum. I hope it's not, it doesn't come across as being self-indulgent. Um, I just want to, I thought it'd be useful to illustrate kind of the different stages of the journey. Um, so we'll start off with this photo here. Um, and this is pretty much from when I started working with Vaughn. This is maybe like February, 2018. I remember um, that chicken. Yeah. <laughs> so February, 2018 uh to this week's check-in um so there's about two and a half years just over between two these two pictures um and my kind of journey i mean it'll be different from every any other person uh but i'm just gonna yeah, discuss a little bit of what how i got to where i am now um hopefully we can all appreciate some glute improvements and some posing improvements um but yeah that's kind of my my addition to this so Again, my first ever chicken picture to a shot from this week. Um, and I suppose just to remind any, everybody here that we all start somewhere. Um, no person that you look up to on Instagram that's got an amazing physique probably started off with that amazing physique. Some people have great genetics, but most of us don't. Most of us just have, um, have well, a really good work ethic to start with um, and also long-term vision where we're okay with understanding that we're going to have to put in the work for a prolonged period of time. Um, when I started working with Vaughn, I'd been going to the gym on and off for quite a few years, but I knew nothing about progressive overload or appropriate nutrition. Um, it didn't even cross my mind that you could be in a calorie surplus, that you didn't have to like either maintain or lose weight for the rest of your life. Um, and obviously as a result of that, I never really saw the, pro the progress that I thought I should have been seeing, uh, considering how hard I thought I was training at the gym. Um, and yeah, I, I just genuinely didn't think I could look any different. Like if I'd had a glass ball and I'd be able to look into the future and see photos of even, you know, my physique now in my off season, I think it would have blown my mind because um, I just didn't have that the belief or the knowledge that could be applied to sort of see how my body could be transformed, which is why hiring a coach at the time was probably the best investment I ever made. Because um, Vaughn, I mean, you'll be able to test that. You were, you were able to see that far further forward than I could um, and then sort of re reflect that back to me in that ongoing coaching process. Um, so yes, yeah, so as I said, um, I didn't know anything, but I'm really stubborn. I'm a quick learner and I'm a perfectionist and I don't like disappointing people. Um, so when Vaughn told me to give it the fucking beans, I, I took that very seriously. I was like, right, I'm going to train hard. I'm going to push myself. Um, but it, within that process, I think I've also been, I suppose, guilty of um, with training, simply focusing on progressing the load and not having, like, not paying as much attention to contracting the muscle and quality of movement. So, I think, like most of us, I've gone between, you know, through periods of pushing, you know, weight on the bar up and then actually going, well, that was shit. I felt nothing. Let's pull back and start again. Um, so, I suppose it's about being okay with learning and being quite open minded. Um, in the long-term vision of the journey. Um, one of the main things that I feel stop me and that stop a lot of people is a fear of judgment. The first thing being fear of judgment of training hard, especially as a female. Uh, believe it or not, nowadays, you still there's still like this perception that females 
uh, shouldn't train hard, that they should go into the gym with their booty bands. And often you get more weird looks for growling at a squat, you know, on a hack squat or whatever than you would for uh, stepping on a Stairmaster with a band around your legs. I've been told off a couple of times um, in a pure gym for being too loud on the hack squat. Uh, but I don't think that same PT would tell another, would tell some fit chick that having a band around your legs on the stairmaster is a big health hazard. So uh, I just suppose to give you some perspective. Um, but that fear of judgment, uh, yeah, I suppose we can say that I got over that, uh, as you can see from these gorgeous photos. Uh, but you just need to remember that you are doing this for you and that people are going to judge regardless of what you choose to do or stop choosing to do, if they even are bothering to judge. Because um, often we think that when we go into the gym, if we're quite self-conscious that people are looking at us, oh my God, what are they thinking? They've probably not got a clue what you're doing. They've probably got very, very similar thoughts about themselves. Um, so remember to focus on your logbook, stay accountable to yourself and stay accountable to your coach. And if it helps to, whenever you can book in a session, to go just train with your coach so you can get that experience. Uh, I definitely recommend that. Um, as a team, these photos were taken in our female training day. Uh, and I'm sure that as soon as gyms reopen, we'll be doing that again. And that's just a chance for all of us to get together and see how hard we train and get our egos up a little bit um, and push each other. Um, but obviously the other side of fear of judgment when it comes to glute building or just building muscle in general, especially as a female, uh, would be the judgment of gaining weight. Um, if you've been relatively lean for a long period of time, if you've done a prep, if you've dieted for ages, uh, people have seen you lose weight. You have probably documented part of this journey too. You've probably received a lot of praise for your effort, for your determination, for your commitment. So then going through the reverse process and having to gain weight, which often by society is deemed as something that is wrong, um, you know, you can be you can be quite scared of being judged. And I think anyone who has prepped before has had comments, uh, whether they were well intended or not, from people being like, oh, you look like you've gained a bit of weight, which you obviously have and you obviously should, but it can feel like a bit of a sting at times. Um, so again, you need to remember why you're embarking on this process um, and keep that focus in mind. And remember to do your best to, to put small things into place that keep that focus there. Um, things like an accountability from a coach, from external providers, the most helpful thing or the best place you could really start. Um, but also practicing things like detachment from scale numbers um, and, uh, and self-affirmation and, you know, kind of giving yourself some self-kindness too. Um, those are just small things that can really help you in that process of gaining weight to build glutes and build muscle overall. Um, so my personal experience, the first two parts of the journey, which were a 12 week kind of push phase and a 21 week dieting phase, um, for me, that very much looked like starting to overcome the fear of high calorie foods. Cause when I started working with Vaughn, I was aiming, you know, and I say aiming with quotation marks for around about 1,500 calories a week. Uh, but of course, if you have followed me, you will know that I struggled a lot with binge eating. So it was 1,500 calories Monday to Friday, smash the gym, not really know what I'm doing or not be consistent with it. And then on the weekends, not train because I felt so disgusted at myself for binging because I was that hungry and I wasn't using my calories productively or I wasn't looking at, at food as a way to fuel performance. Um, so when we started pushing calories up, for me, that was a challenge to to be okay with eating more food and to actually appreciate the transformations that my body was going through with that high food. So I remember I would eat like Cheerios and bagels and peanut butter. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, and my body's looking better. My body weight is maintaining, but my physique is improving. Like, what is this, you know, black magic? Um, so it was very much about focusing on that. Um, overcoming, as I said, the fear of judgment at the gym. So obviously when you start a new program, a bit scared, don't really know what you're doing. Um, you know, what will people think? What's a reverse band squat? How am I supposed to attach this? What do I step on to, to get the bands across the right place? Um, what if I fail a rep? Just these thoughts that are normal, especially when you start off within a new program. Um, and having the support throughout was the, you know, was 
crucial. And I think it's, it's like anything, the more you do it and the more reps you put in of going into the, into the gym with heavy metal blasting or whatever music you like blasting through your earphones uh, and just focusing on your own little world and beating your logbook, the easier it becomes that then people come and tap you on the shoulder and tell you to shut up and you're like, oh, I was actually being loud. Sorry. Um, and it's just about getting over that. Um, for me, I think the most critical part of all this journey was the kind of going from my first prep, finishing my first prep to my first proper gaining phase where I gained 12 kilos in around about seven months because we were aiming to compete uh, again the year after. Um, and I finished my show was on like the 9th of September. Um, and in order to compete in September the year after I had to start prep in May. Um, so just to give you an idea and the goal was obviously to put on as much muscle as possible and in order to do that I really really had to push to get my food up um, so yeah it wasn't always easy uh, especially because I'd never seen my physique that lean and I think that when you've been stage lean your perception of like what a lean physique is just completely is completely screwed forever, which isn't a bad thing, but it just is. Um, so some days were easier than others. And I found it really important to implement things such as mindful eating with the foods that I thought would be potentially triggering. Um, so things like eating a large amount of carbs that previously I would have considered like bad foods. Um, for me, it was really important to sit down and eat them mindfully and really take my time um, to acknowledge how I was feeling in that process and to kind of almost like mentally reassure myself that no, you're not binging, you're sitting down, you're having your post-workout meal, you've had a great training session, focus on that process. Um, and again, keeping track of my logbook and keeping track of those lifts. Um, I also focus a lot of enjoying life. So I started my master's um, you know, three weeks after stepping off stage for the first time, um, which meant that I was a student again, uh, which meant that I was, you know, living the student life a lot of weekends too. And it was really nice um, to be able to kind of marry these two together. I think the gym kept me sane and it gave me a different focus outside of the, outside of uni that I was able to control almost. Um, and it sort of made it easier to an extent to be able to push body weight up and to be able to push calories up because I was going on nights out, but I was also training really, really hard on the other side. So for example, my hip thrust at the end of my first prep was at 92 and a half kilos um, before I started prep. So in the second photo here, it was at 120 and I was able to push it up to 127 by the end of uh, my second prep. Um, and then it continued to go up thereafter um so it was nice to have that focus but also the balance with real life and being able to smash a pizza when i'm hung over uh, not that i do that anymore but uh you know still training hard i do remember this one time where i was sick at in the gym because i went in to train thinking i was okay and i definitely was not okay um but yeah just just to illustrate that even in an off season like you're allowed to you know enjoy life take a foot off the gas sometimes but still make sure that you're being consistent i don't think i missed a single workout um you know in between these these two photos except for like a week that i was ill or something um and as i said like some days are easier than others um i think there can be a lot of self-doubt because when you do gain weight um especially as females like you're probably not absolutely humongous but body fat does mask a lot of those lines in your body so you sometimes just think you know uh, have I even grown? Have I even improved? It doesn't look like I've got muscles because I don't have striations. Um, but, you know, remind yourself that when you are trying to push up with your glutes, especially, and with your legs, you just need to continue to focus on that logbook, continue to look back and go, right, I'm trusting the process because if this is going up, if my body weight is going up, if I'm able to tolerate more food and continue to improve my lifts and overall not miss any of those three things that Vaughn pointed out, then I know that next time I lean down, I will look much better. I will have gained muscle. My stage weight, if you look to compete, will probably be a wee bit higher because I will have put on that muscle. Um, 
there is also a lot of comparison to other girls. I know I've experienced this for sure. And obviously with Instagram, all you have to do is search, you know, hashtag PCA and the amount of posts that come up, it's just crazy. So it's very easy to get bogged down looking at how other girls are gaining weight, not just in, you know, bikini uh, post show, uh, but just in general. And and you know, don't be guilty of comparing yourself to other people because everyone's on a completely different journey. And Instagram is just a highlight reel. Um, so if someone's you know saying that they feel great because they're pushing body weight up, but they've actually they're only like three kilos above stage weight and they're maintaining there the whole year, it's not going to be productive for growth, and they're probably talking shit. Um, so remember that. Uh, try your best not to compare yourself to other people. If you find yourself doing that, unfollow them. That's the only and best advice I can give. Um, and surround your, create your social media so that it is full of people who inspire you to keep pushing, to keep pushing for that goal that you have, um, whether they're on the same journey or not. Um, and as I said before, I use a lot of self-affirmation throughout this journey, especially in the push phase. Um, as I said, focusing on things like performance is going to be the best driver for success. Um, and yes, you absolutely can tell yourself that you're a fucking beast, whether that's out loud or in your head before you go in for a set, uh, and believe it. Um, and yeah, a lot of the grunting and that maybe you don't need it, but it helps. It 100% helps channel that energy and really, I suppose it helps you believe that you are capable of eliciting that change and that you will eventually develop that physique that you want. Um, so don't be shy. Um, so here, I don't know if you can see, there you go. It, that is the photo that I, you saw before. Um, and a photo of me at, I believe this is my qualifier for the UKUP. So again, there is, I think a 13 kilo difference between these photos. So, oh, sorry. So if I take us back here, that was my first prep, pre-prep, and then moving forward, that difference there. Um, so remember, obviously, you can see my glutes do look better. Um, so you don't have to always push body weight up to then tell yourself that you will diet down. But if your goal is to look better on stage or in a photo shoot, it's so fucking worth it. Um, and I remember being this lean and looking at this photo and thinking, holy crap, I don't remember looking and feeling like that. Because when you're lean, you just think that anything different to that is huge uh, but now I'm like yeah I'm, I'm on my way to to this physique if not better um, and I'm excited because you just feel incredible most of the time um, as I said before people have seen you lose weight um, and it can be scary uh, to gain it back on um, because obviously again your perception of what lean looks like is completely skewed um, but just focus on the process, focus on your end goal, hire a coach who's going to remind you of that end goal um, and keep working your butt off quite literally. Um, this is the difference of this is December to this week's check-in. Um, I think I am about six kilos, six kilos different between these. And again, you can see that my legs have just continued to grow, continue to progress. And I know that by looking at my logbook, food on my plate and um and my body weight obviously on the scales so to wrap up what i've said about 200 times remind yourself of the importance of your self-talk be kind to yourself remember the goal um tell yourself you're a queen and that you're a female hulk and that you're an absolute beast uh focus on the amount of energy you're going to have when you're eating this much food it feels amazing to not be hungry to be performing at your best and to just be like bouncing off the walls all the time um and you'll be curvy as hell and it looks so so nice um regardless of the phase that you're in um so i'm going to shut up now because we have spoken for really really long sorry about that um and yeah as i said if you've got any questions on the sort of mindset aspect of gaining weight and um I suppose like some of the thoughts that might come with it. Um, just feel free to get in touch, drop me a message on Instagram or as Ali said, you can always just get in touch via email. Um, but over to you guys. I don't know if anyone in the attendees has got a question, wants to add anything or if you want another question. What I was going to add um, was that, that we don't have a solely female attendee list. So no, Matt's in here. Guys, 
by, yeah. all, by all means, call yourself a queen before that talk. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that for you, then, then that, <laughs> that's totally cool. I no, don't, what I mean, though, I if you... call myself a queen before my set, but <laughs> it might work. <laughs> what I mean though is like even to, if you're a coach and you work with female clients um, you know in being able to empower them or having the tools to speak to them in such a way that they understand that they can be empowered by gaining weight you might not say to your client you're a queen call yourself a queen but perhaps encouraging them to use positive self-talk or encouraging self-talk um, and helping them explore what that looks like for them um, I mean I never coined the term female Hulk that was born but I like it <laughs> So yeah. I take it on board. Um, and then I call myself a queen because Hulk's a bit green and like ugly. Uh, but you know, it, 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 it works in that way where the more empowered you feel both as a coach to deliver that to your clients and yourself as a female to apply that to yourself, um, the more successful the result will be over time. Um, and I suppose it's just about having that conversation of what, what are the challenges that that person is facing on a week to week basis. Um, and nipping it in the bud and just having an honest and open conversation about, you know, the objective, rational, why are we doing this? Don't lose focus. And I have these conversations with Vaughn on a regular basis. Like, don't be fooled. I struggle with these things too. Um, it's just an ability of voicing it, nipping it in the bud, and then bringing back the focus um, yeah. to the here and now. So, yeah. Uh, I guess that's something that be under no illusion guys uh, when obviously you hear us speaking we've we've been through the trenches and and, and whatnot and um, we'll still have those days where mm -hmm. self-doubt will come in or you know getting frustrated at little things getting stressed when we shouldn't we just don't really show that side of it but um you know me and clara will still speak about body weight on a number of occasions that the same chat we had two and a half years ago and i'm sure ali has the same chats with his girls and, and as a coach, that's just something that you need to realize that you'll always need to do. And I'm never frustrated by having the same conversation. Uh, I know that every year, the frequency of the conversations will get less. Mm -hmm. But I understand that they will always come. And that's all right. But mm -hmm. rather than get too hippy-dippy, um, what I wanted to tell you guys about um, before you go was just something that we have been working on the background that, that you will should be, well, people in England will be able to get access to um, gyms. So what we've done, um, I handle more of the sort of admin side of things. So um, the, this video is of me talking, but in general, like we all have been working pretty hard to give you guys something for free that would add value to your journey. So all you've got to do, head over to the website, name and email, hey, hey get started, um, and then you'll start receiving everything that, I've spoke about, Ali spoke about, Clara spoke about, um, is all in there. And if you want your free program as well, uh, the literally that Bikini Girl program, it's on the website. Just hit female, name and email. Um, and then something that, that we've not really spoke about, um, it's not up as of yet, but we will be doing an eight-week elite physique program. Um, you guys may be seeing the six-week one. Some of you may be done the 12 that's ongoing or currently a way to start depending on, you know, if you're in England or Scotland. Uh, but we will be doing an eight-week one, so just watch out for that one. Any questions that were covered, please just direct them via Instagram or, mm -hmm. or email one or to, to Ali or to Clara um, or to myself or whatever. Now, what we'd hugely appreciate, um, if you could, um, you know, I, I did my hair especially for this, as you can see. Um, if you could just take a wee snap, a wee picture um, for us, pop on Instagram. I promise you that next time Ali will be shaven, he will have his hair combed and he will look yep. presentable. Um, hair cut. But if you could... We yeah, next week, I'll have my hair cut next time too, hopefully. Gosh. We would appreciate that. Um, if you enjoyed this, um, let us know. It will be on YouTube um, more than likely tomorrow, uh, if not over the weekend. On YouTube, you could see all of the webinars that we've delivered uh, how many have we done so far loads count the weeks of lockdown and kind of split it in half or something i don't know i think we've at least like six or seven i think i've got a feeling I, I think this is number seven the first three we've done were like q and a's mm -hmm. and then we've done um four this is the fourth one that's like a presentation yeah. the last one we've done 
was the return of the gyms, <laughs> which was we'd been I given some <laughs> information at the time. Um, and obviously, with Down in England 25th up here a couple weeks after, um, please do check that out amongst other ones. Um, and on top of all of that, you know, we've got free content on Instagram, but also articles. Clara just posted one today. Me and Ali posted one last week. Um, so do check them out. So any questions, guys, please do let us know. But other than that, where are you doing? So <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks very much.